This past week, I hosted a candle making class in my new space, and I thought it might be helpful to talk about what goes into my preparations for hosting a class as a maker myself, what I charge, all of the like fun behind the scenes details in case this is something you might want to do either as a host of one or as an attendee. I went up really high on that. A lot of people have asked if I'm going to be doing soap making classes and as much as I would love to teach people how to make soap because it is so fun and it's so unique and it's very useful, obviously being able to make your own soap is great. The process of making soap is so much more filled with liabilities. <laughs> Working with lye and it being a caustic ingredient, I just don't want the responsibility of making sure that everyone is responsible and safe and even sometimes if you are responsible and safe accidents happen and that's way too much pressure for me i just can't handle that also the supplies that you need to make soap like everybody needs uh, an immersion blender like i don't want to have 10 of those on hand like i just don't have the space to store all of the things that you would need to make soap that being said i'm not never say never maybe down the road there'll be a, a format where that works for me, but I will not be offering soap making classes anytime soon. I think there are other things that I make or things adjacent to what I make that would make a great class. I think it would be great to make a perfume class. I mean, I have the fragrance oils, really all you need is a carrier oil. So people sort of mixing their own fragrances would be a really easy thing for me to offer. So that might be in the future. I might do melt and pour soap making classes because that's much safer. You're just melting the soap, you're not mixing it yourself, but people still get the fun of picking out a fragrance and picking out a color and like maybe adding botanicals. So I think there's other things I might do in the future once I have nailed down the process for this candle making class, but candles are sort of the low hanging fruit in terms of logistics and appeal. So that's why I started with candles. I initially decided to start teaching candle making classes as a way to make up income during slow times. There are certain chunks of the year that are a little bit slower just for the kind of product that I make. I mean, there are times of the year that are slow for everyone in terms of like product-based businesses, but I've also just like noticed sort of natural ebbs and flows in terms of sales and events and the typical streams of income that I have. And candle making classes seems like a really good supplement. One of the reasons that it's really great is because it's a really good indoor activity. And the beginning of the year is always slow. You're coming off the holidays when everybody's just like spent a bunch of money or received a bunch of gifts. They're not really in the mindset to be shopping. So it's just not big for sales. And it's also where I live, very cold. I mean, it's very cold in a lot of places, but it's a great time to offer an indoor based activity because people are looking to do things. They don't just want to sit at home, but obviously they need the warmth of an indoor thing. So it, it's really great for the early months of the year. And then it's also a great bridal shower bachelorette activity I've noticed. And those typically happen early spring. I mean, they happen any time of year, but there's obviously like the popularity of wedding season being mostly like summer and fall. So you're hitting those bachelorette parties and bridal showers like a little bit before that. It's also a great way to expose new people to your brand because the way that I currently do it is I offer private groups. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. You could either figure out how many slots you can accommodate, how many people you can accommodate and let random people sign up for a date. Or you can tell people I can work with a group anywhere from X amount of people to Y amount of people and let them figure out who's coming and bring them in. And uh, that's how I currently do it just because I, it's a little bit easier for me to like have a small group that all knows each other because it's kind of close quarters. And so if it were a bunch of strangers, depending on the people, that might be great. But at this point, I think the easiest thing to do is have people who already know each other or have some sort of like common ground, whatever their motivation is for coming. And then they can be here together. 
so that's currently how I schedule. I have people reach out to me personally say I have, I can do five to 10 people. 10 is just the max amount of people I can fit in my space without it feeling too crowded. And five is the minimum amount of people that I can do to make it worth my time because I figured out how much I make on each sign up. And that was just, that was just a number I picked myself for like what, <laughs> what amount of money felt worth it for me to like take an evening away from my family. So that's how I came up with that number. Another important thing to do before you offer this to someone is figure out what the true costs of each person's sign up is. So for me, that was calculating the costs of all of the ingredients start to finish of what they need. So for me, that's it's fairly easy. I had this information anyway because I use these vessels for myself. Everyone's making a candle tin when they come. And so I just figured out the pricing and what the true cost of each person's sign up is. And then I knew from there, how much did I want to profit on each one and what was a reasonable price point based on other classes that I saw in the area or classes that I've taken doing other things. What was a price point where I felt comfortable that would also make enough money for this to be worth my time. For me, I settled on $40. That's the ticket price to come make a candle. Another thing I had to think through was timing. The tricky thing about candles is that you obviously have to wait for them to cool in order to take them home. I know there are some places who offer candle making classes who require you to come back the next day to pick it up, but I didn't want to have to mess with that, honestly. I want people to be able to walk away with the candle they make and then that's the end of the transaction because I didn't want to have to manage the logistics of scheduling times for people to come or any of that. So I needed to make sure that the type of candle they were making could cool in a reasonable amount of time for them to take it home with them. And obviously I've made enough of these candles to know that they take like roughly an hour to cool. Sometimes it's faster, but like that's pretty much the general time frame. It would be a two hour class. The first hour would be actually picking out your fragrance oils, playing around with mixing them, making the candle itself, pouring the wax. And then the second hour would be like an open, like socialize, drink, snack, talk amongst yourselves while your candles are cooling. And that was another reason why I liked the idea of small groups that already knew each other, because I knew that killing that time, that like hour time frame, when you all know each other already, that's more like going for a drink at a bar. That's something that people who know each other can do. I'm more nervous about what that would look like if it's a bunch of strangers. I've thought that like, if I could set up different tables, so maybe they're in like small groups and they talk to each other and that could work. Um, I've also thought about having like fun, small sort of like board game type things that if it's a group that doesn't know each other, it could be like a fun icebreaker kind of thing. But again, it's something I, I didn't have the bandwidth to worry about right now. So that's what I like about groups that already know each other. So the first hour they get here, they get settled, they put their food and snacks, their drinks, wherever. And then I go over my introduction to how to make a candle. I keep this pretty brief because really most people are coming as a way to get out of the house, do something fun, walk away with a great product. But like most people aren't coming because they're gonna start a candle making business. <laughs> like I don't need to go in depth about like different types of waxes and fragrance oil percentage. If people want to ask you those questions, that's great. And I'm, I'll answer any question from someone who's taking a class, but I've been to candle making classes particularly, but just like classes in general, where the host is just sort of like talking, 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 and you're sitting there like, okay, can we just do it? Like, I'm, can we just make the thing? And so I, I would much rather people think of questions to ask me than sitting waiting for me to finish my spiel so that like they can actually get to making the candles. So I pretty much say, I'm Steph, started this business, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 
I, I mentioned that I use 100% soy wax because that's, I think, an important aspect of it. People are maybe curious about that. And then I go into how to mix fragrance oils. I usually group fragrance oils by general type. I don't have the supply to offer a ton of different options. And honestly, I think that that ends up overwhelming people anyway. So I have about four different categories of scents and four scents within each category. I usually do like a foodie sweet, which is coffee, vanilla, I have a creamy nutmeg that smells really good. Then I usually have like a fruity one. I have a floral one. And then I have one that's maybe like earthy or a little bit more masculine. And so that to me has been pretty sufficient. Some people honestly just want to take one fragrance oil and stick to it. They're overwhelmed by the idea of mixing fragrances. And I say, go for it. Like, make whatever you're going to enjoy. I don't want to stress people out. The whole point of this is to have fun. And if you make it too complicated, it's, it feels more like homework or like a pop quiz than it does a fun activity. Most people don't need a ton of guidance when they're mixing. I do tell them to sort of like smell the fragrances together under their nose before they start mixing them. But, and I'll get like some questions about ratios, like hey, I'm gonna mix these two together. Which one do you think there should be more of? Like that sort of thing. And I'm always happy to offer advice on that. And I feel like, again, it's a very casual. I think the best thing is to like take as much pressure off of people as possible. I, in all the candles that people have made, I think we've done like, I've done at least like 25 candles that people have made through a candle making class. I haven't once come across one that smelled gross. So that's great news. <laughs> I think the likelihood that someone's gonna really mess it up is pretty low. Once I've explained the concept behind how you wanna mix fragrance oils, I do have a little beaker that I tell them to start with, start small. Start with like a couple of drops of each fragrance, mix it around, see how you feel. And then I explain to them, for the candle that they're making, they need to fill it to the 20 line. I figured that out beforehand, and then that's like a really easy marker for how much fragrance oil they need. The supplies in general at their place setting when they sit down. There is a clipboard is the main thing. I've printed out a little place for notes on the front where they can put which fragrances they've mixed together. They will put a name for their candle, which is really, that's honestly so fun to see what people come up with. Sometimes it's silly, sometimes it's very thoughtful, and I really like that part. And then for me, I also offer on the second page some options of label types. So I let people choose from four templates of what they want their label to look like. And that's something I custom make for them while we're in that hour time frame where they're just talking to each other and we're sort of waiting for the candles to cool. That was like something that I thought would be kind of fun in terms of a way for me to like stay occupied and out of their hair, but also offer like a really custom detail. So. I think people have fun with that too, like making a legitimate label for their product. And it just adds another like special touch, which I think is really fun. The next big thing is their pitcher, their like wax pitcher. Those, I love the like little small individual size ones. When it's, when they are done mixing their fragrance oils, I am the one to go get wax. I fill up that little pitcher with the wax that they need. Again, it's a liability thing, it's a mess thing. I just don't want people to have to worry about getting wax on their clothes or anything like that. So I fill it up with the wax that they need and then I bring it back to them. They've got their little glass beaker for mixing their fragrance oils. This is just like, I mostly just wanted it because it's so cute. <laughs> There's something about little stuff that's just adorable. Um, and I feel like people sort of like that. Somebody mentioned in this last class feels like we're back in science class, which is like very, yeah. It, there's like a nostalgia to that little tiny beaker that's fun. They also have a whisk that's for mixing the fragrance oil into the wax when it comes time. They've got a pencil for taking notes, obviously. That's an important thing to include. They've got their warning label, which is the first thing I have them do. That's the first step just to make sure we don't forget. And also, if you accidentally pour the wax and forget to put the sticker on beforehand, 
you're gonna have to wait until it fully cools. And it's just something you don't wanna forget about. So the first step always is putting the warning label on the bottom of the tin. And then they've got their wick, their wick clip, and their wick clip sticker. <laughs> and that's the second step that we do. So I have them put the warning label on, then I have them put the wick in the wick clip. I explain a little bit about wood wicks and then have them stick it to the tin. And then that's when they start mixing fragrance oils. It's really reassuring, like I said, that I have yet to have someone make like a bad smelling candle. I think if you're picking the fragrance oils that you offer as options, being sort of conscious about how those come together and making sure there's nothing that's like too left field that if it if it pops in there, it's gonna really mess things up. That's part of it. It's like thinking through how people might go about mixing. I also like to offer seasonal fragrances. So I always offer fragrance oils in my candles that I make because again, if they just wanna like make a very simple, like no risk candle in terms of like knowing that it'll smell good, I put out a bottle that says like freshly foraged during Christmas time or apple blossom during springtime. And then they know for sure, like if they just really like that candle, they can just make their own. But most people I think want to mix and like get the experience of sort of like the creativity of coming up with their own fragrance. Like I said, it's about two hours start to finish, which is seems to be just the right amount of time. I. I think it'll be fun to potentially do other kinds of products down the line and see how those sort of classes mix and match with each other. I do like the idea of opening it up to the public, just picking dates regularly and having a certain amount of open slots and they fill up when they fill up. But as of right now, this has been a really fun addition to my business. I like talking to people. I like hearing people's feedback about fragrances and what seeing what they pick. It's kind of like a fun little focus group in some ways. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe so that you get updated on all future videos that I post.